Hey you guys, welcome back to Flickers of Fear, coming up on Halloween, the big day. And uh, so in the lead up to Halloween, I was looking for some movies that were kind of like more in a classic stately autumnal kind of vibe, like ones that I hadn't seen before, perhaps something new. So when I was scrolling through all of this stuff on Shudder, I noticed that there was a 2022 movie uh, that Shudder recently added. I believe it was the at the end of September and it was called Raven's Hollow. And this seemed to be exactly the kind of movie that I was looking for. So this was directed by Christopher Hatton, uh, who also, he's done like several movies, but um, I think the probably the best known one was from 2013. And it was called Battle of the Damned, like an action movie with Dolph Lundgren. But this movie in particular is a very, very gloomy, kind of dreary period piece. And it's kind of like giving you a story about like a fanciful and horrific event in the life of a relatively young Edgar Allan Poe, like obviously before he was famous, which would go on to explain like why he wrote about such morbid subjects like later on in his life. Uh, the movie definitely provided some of the spooky fall vibes that I was looking for. It's very kind of like, it's not set at Halloween necessarily, but it is set in the autumn. So it has that kind of like vibe to it. Uh, and it also had some really cool gore. Overall for me though, I think it fell kind of like right in the middle of the spectrum. Like it wasn't like great, but it wasn't like it wasn't bad but it wasn't great you know what I mean it was just kind of like maybe like a, fo a solid six somewhere around there like I said if I gave numerical scores which I don't usually because like I said I think it's kind of productive but that's where it would fall about in the middle so it's pretty easy to see why it's called Raven's Hollow not only because you know duh Edgar Allan Poe the Raven and so forth but also because it has kind of like a folkloric angle that sort of somewhat recalls uh, you know the Washington Irving story Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Now the cinematography and the set design and the color palette of this movie actually also somewhat recalls Tim Burton's uh, 1999 adaptation, which was just called Sleepy Hollow. Um, although I will say that the um, that the kind of hues in Raven's Hollow are a lot more subdued. Like it's a lot more kind of just like blue, green, gray um, without like a lot of, I mean, I guess there is kind of bloody. It's not, it's not as over the top as, you know, Tim Burton's is, but it's kind of like a similar kind of look to it. So at the beginning of the story, uh, it's 1830 and Edgar Allan Poe, who is played by William Mosley, who looked kind of familiar. He's been in a couple things that I've seen. Um, I think he was in a uh, friend request, uh, which I saw, but I think he played Peter in the Chronicles of Narnia movies. So maybe I, I think I maybe saw the first one of those and maybe that's where I'm recognizing him from. But he's playing Edgar Allan Poe and he's on a training exercise with a bunch of his fellow West Point cadets, which is true, like Edgar Allan Poe did get a West Point, uh, and they're in upstate New York, like doing field exercises or whatever. Now, by chance, uh, they happen upon a very grisly scene. There's kind of like this tree-like structure that sort of resembles a bird type situation. And on that thing is a man who's kind of like bound on there, like almost kind of like a crucifixion or like a sacrificial kind of pose. Uh, worse than that even, the man has been completely disemboweled and uh, horribly is still clinging to life, even though his intestines are like literally like hanging out of his body. Uh, now, before he dies, he actually only speaks a single word and that single word is Raven. Now, most of the cadets, uh, probably understandably, do not wanna get involved with whatever grotesque fucking business this might be. But Poe is pretty adamant that this is their job. They really have to like take the man to the nearest village. It's the right thing to do. They have to find out not only who he is, but who exactly killed him and why. So in the course of this endeavor, the men actually find this small settlement that's called obviously Raven's Hollow. And when they arrive, a funeral is taking place. And the funeral is actually like of this little girl that you saw die like in a really weird, like fucked up way, like at the beginning of the movie, like in the prologue. Now, Poe gets there and he asks if anybody knows who this dead man is that he's carried back to this village on the back of his horse. But everybody in the town denies knowing him. It's pretty clear though, that they're all hiding something. And so Poe gets kind of like offended <laughs> by the whole thing. Like these motherfuckers, they totally know something uh, and they're not telling me. So he takes it upon himself to try and figure out what it is that they're keeping from him. 
So him and the other guys, uh, they check into the village's only inn. It's, you know, like I said, it's a very small settlement. And Poe actually kind of, I don't want to go too far in this direction, but he does kind of like start making eyes at this sort of charming like young woman named Charlotte. He's played by Melanie Zanetti, uh, who is a very like forthright and she's kind of like morbidly curious. Like she comes up to see the body like, I'll be okay. Just let me see it. Like almost like she's like she's a little too excited about it so he kind of digs that but um on the other hand she also acts like super sus just like everybody else in the town does now before the cadets retire for their first night in town there's a stable hand named usher and he tells them that um you know you guys had better get gone if you know what's good for you because the village is haunted by some kind of creature that everybody just refers to as the raven. That's all they'll say is just like, well, it's not a bird and it's not a person, uh, That's, but that's all they'll say about it. Now, the men, of course, you know, they they scoff at this supernatural nonsense. Uh, that is until one of their number mysteriously disappears in the night, leaving only a severed hand to remember him by. So after that, Edgar Allan Poe is on the case, uh, which I kind of liked because that foreshadows the detective fiction genre that the real Edgar Allan Poe would essentially invent. Um, so operating under the assumption that a human killer is responsible for the deaths and disappearances, which of course you probably would. Poe attempts to get to the bottom of this mounting series of crimes, like more people are turning up dead, more of his guys are like disappearing and turning up dead. Um, and all the while he's kind of being stymied by the very cagey villagers who obviously know a great deal more about what's going on than they're willing to tell him. So much like Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, uh, this movie is kind of like a very bleak, moody, historical horror that mixes a detective story with the supernatural. Now, unlike uh, Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, though, um, there's no humor in this because Sleepy Hollow like had like some funny uh, kind of stuff to it. This one is not funny. It's very, very serious. And I will say too that there's not really a lot of mystery to unravel for the viewer in this movie because we're pretty sure from the very beginning that the Raven is a real monster of some kind or at any rate that there is something like supernatural going on. Um, but it's still interesting to watch the story play out. Now, I will admit though that I found the lore like surrounding the creature to be a tad convoluted and a little bit difficult to parse like once it was all laid out. But, you know, it makes sense. But you just kind of like, wait, what? You know what I mean? It's kind of like that. Uh, also, I'll say the CGI on the creature and in a few other scenes is not the best but it's serviceable enough for the story and you know wisely they kept it to a minimum i mean you can tell this is a fairly low budget it looks really really nice for a low budget movie but you can tell that the cgi isn't like top-notch cgi you know what i mean so there's not a ton of it in there and that was probably like a good idea uh also one thing that i did like about this was that there was a great deal of gore most of which looked practical and it was like just super like awesomely gooey uh one particular scene of a completely like torn apart body just strewn all over the altar of the village church uh was a definite highlight it was like super disgusting and i think it was like really really well done also for the most part uh the acting was very good william mosley uh i think he did a good job as edgar Allan poe and some of the other like more veteran actors that are in this like kate Dickey, uh, who plays Charlotte's mother, Elizabeth, uh, were great. I will say that some of the actors with some of the, like, the more minor roles, like some of the other cadets and stuff, um, you know, came off a tad stagey, but nothing too distracting. So all in all, like I said, this is a very decent period horror. If you're looking for that kind of harvest time in New England sort of ambiance, like I said, to kind of gear up for Halloween or whatever, or if you're really into Edgar Allan Poe and want to see like a, you know, kind of a serious supernatural tale that attempts to explain the author's later macabre proclivities, I guess. Now, some of the Poe references seemed a little shoehorned in, like the stable hand, who's actually like a major character, uh, being named Usher, for example, and there's like a flashback like that features a girl named Lenore that was like somebody's sister or whatever. But it was still like pretty uh, a pretty amusing diversion, I guess, to try and pick out all the Poe Easter eggs that had been, you know, woven into the story. I mean, this isn't the best like Poe 
as a fictional character movie that I've ever seen because, you know, there's more than one of those, believe it or not. Uh, but it's definitely worth a watch if you're kind of into gory, gothic, Victorian kind of stuff. Like I said, if you like Sleepy Hollow, then you'll probably like this because it's along the same lines, although it's not funny. So that will do it for this Flickers of Fear. Uh, let me know if you've seen this movie in the comments, what you thought about it. What are you guys watching in the lead up to Halloween? Let me know also in the comments and I will see you guys again on the next one. Bye.